Okay, so I'm going to begin. Um, today is a two-part day. We will review Newton's third law, which is the action reaction one, which will take about maybe 20 minutes or so. And then we're going to get right into drawing a free body diagram, or as I like to call them, an FBD. Um, and then tomorrow, we'll get right into the favorite, everyone's favorite, solving problems. So come on down, get yourself a clicker, and we'll get started right away. This is simply another little review of the uh, third law here, Newton's laws, which I know you've seen in grade 10. Are we good to go there, Cole? Okay. Okay, so a force is simply a push or pull that acts upon the object as a result of its interaction with another object. Forces result from interactions. There has to be some kind of interaction. Does there have to be contact? Can you apply a force, not you, but can an object apply a force without being in contact? Yeah. Is the wind, okay, well, what is the object in the wind blowing, say, on a golf ball? Okay, well, let's talk about those dead items. You are aware that that's just a story, right? <laughs> Actually, if there was one thing I, you know what, if I had one wish, would this? Well, if I had a lot of wishes, one of them would be to be teach a class once with the power of the force. Right? That'd be so cool. The kids die just like, oh, how did he do that? Oh man, wouldn't that be cool? Like if I said, you know, what goes up must stay up. That'd be cool. Wouldn't that be cool? You trapped the laws of physics. So many people into thinking that physics is interesting. <laughs> Again, I will take that as a compliment, but I'm not. That was a shot, I'm sorry. That was a shot, though. Okay. So, I know. I, I was surprised that everyone said no, you wouldn't have to be in contact. Because I would think, like, if I want to push on the table, I got to, you know, Gotta go over there and touch it, right? Honestly, like, what if, what if it was like a wind? Like, you take it. Excellent. Okay, magnets, good. What about just plain old gravity? Okay, good. I'll, no, but what's pulling on the tennis ball? Gravity. The earth. Oh, gotcha. The earth, right? So that's good. That's a, that's a topic for another day. As discussed in lesson two, some forces result from contact interactions normal, frictional, tensional. Applied force are examples of contact forces. Other forces are the result of action at a distance interactions like gravity, electrical, and magnetic. And more about that when we get into that unit. According to Newton, whenever objects A and B interact with each other, they exert forces upon each other. When you sit in your chair, as you're doing now, your body exerts a downward force on the chair, and the chair exerts an upward force on your body. I'm going to highlight that. There, I remember a couple of students once, I literally had to argue with them about that. They didn't believe it, that there was an upward force. Well, that's what's holding you in place. If there was no upward force, you would fall to the ground. Exactly. There are two forces resulting from this interaction, a force on the chair and a force on your body. Are they equal to each other or numerically equal? They should be. Are they in the same or opposite direction? Opposite, right? Opposite. These two forces are called action and reaction forces and are the subject of Newton's third law of motion. Formally stated, Newton's third law is for every action. Now, your sheet doesn't say this, does it? Your sheet says for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. I added the word force in. Did I not hand this out? Silly, silly me. You knew you were missing something. Now that you have the sheet, sorry about the little Chris Angel tangent line there. Okay, your sheet doesn't say action force. Can you write it in? Because I think it's important. This author didn't think that it was important enough. People say this all the time, right? Like when someone does something, right? Like if I, um, you know, go over and whack Lucas in the face, well, he's likely to react somehow, maybe whack me in the face or kick me in the shit or worse. Right? That's really not Newton's law. That's just the, the code kind of thing, right? Like someone smacks you, you smack them back. Right? So I want to clarify that Newton's law is really for every action force. Because if I whack Lucas in the face, I'm not going to, that's stupid. If I whack Lucas in the face, his face actually whacks me in the head. 
Right? That's what I'm talking about. There's a difference. Okay? So please change that. For every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. Yes. Don't please don't hit your face with my hand. <laughs> this statement means that in every interaction there is a pair of forces acting on the two interacting objects. The size of the forces on the first object equals the size of the force on the second object. They are equivalent. The direction of the force on the first object is opposite to the direction of the force on the second object. Forces always come in pairs, equal and opposite action, reaction, force pairs. Okay? And I'm going to get into free body diagrams right away, but imagine, just think of this, a box or whatever sitting on a table. There is what we call the weight force down, and there is what we call the normal force up. Is the book at rest? How many people think the book is at rest? Is it, are, are they equal the forces? Those forces are equal, <laughs> equal and opposite. How many people think the book is at rest? Well done, Kurt. It could be at rest, or it could also be moving at a constant velocity. It doesn't have to be at rest. Fn stands for normal force. You don't need to worry about that just yet. We're going to talk more about that a bit, right? Remember I said I keep asking that question? Mm -hmm. Some of you just failed it a few times there. Because the answer is we don't know if it's moving or we don't know if it's at rest. It's one of those two things. Examples of interaction force pairs. A variety of action reaction force pairs are evident in nature. Consider the propulsion of a fish through the water. Or yourself for that matter when you're swimming. A fish uses its fin to, fins to push water backwards. But a push on the water will only serve to accelerate the water. You push on the water. Since forces result from mutual interactions, the water must also be pushing the fish forwards, propelling the fish through the water. The harder you push on the water, the harder the water pushes back on the fish and moves it forward. The size of the force in the water equals the size of the force on the fish. The direction of the force in the water backwards is opposite the direction of the force on the fish forwards. For every action, there is an equal in size and opposite in direction reaction force. Pretty straightforward, right? The real uh, test will be when we get to the end here, I'll ask you some questions and do you truly believe it or are you just memorizing it? We'll find out. Here's another example. Consider birds. A bird flies by use of its wings. The wings of a bird push air downwards. Since forces result from mutual interactions, we're repeating a lot here, the force must also be pushing the bird upwards. The size of the force on the air equals the size of the, of the force on the bird. The direction of the force on the air downwards is opposite the direction of the force on the bird upwards. For every action, there's an equal in size and opposite in direction reaction. I just repeated myself over and over again. Newton's third law allows birds to fly. Last one. You're driving your car or truck on the way to school. A car is equipped with wheels that spin. As the wheels spin, they grip the road and push the road backwards. The wheels push the road backwards. How come the road doesn't go backwards? It's attached to the earth. The earth is really big. If a small person goes over and pushes Lucas, Lucas doesn't go anywhere. He's big compared to a small kid. Just like the car on the road. Okay? Since forces result from mutual interactions, the road must also be pushing the wheels forward. There's the key there. The road pushes the wheels forward. And since the car is attached to the wheels, the car goes forward. The size of the force of the road equals the size of the force on the wheels. Or the car. The direction of the force in the road is opposite the direction of the force in the wheels. For every action, there is an equal in size and opposite reaction. Let's see if you truly get this. <coughs> Do you have three questions there? You have the questions, I think, don't you? 
Okay. Can I do more than one question at once? No, they're separate. Okay. Go ahead and try that first one while I go mark attendance. Well, correct answer. Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Bennett has screwed up. This is what happens when I make up a new new uh, little lesson like this and I forget to double check the answer. What's the correct answer? Now you don't know, do you? Well, I can tell you this. It's not A. It's like the force of the bus acting on the fire. What have I been saying all along? What does... Oh, no, no, big difference, big difference, Lucas. It says, let me read it. While driving down the road, a firefly strikes the windshield of a bus and makes a quite obvious mess in front of the face of the driver. This is a clear case of Newton's third law motion. The firefly hit the bus and the bus hit the firefly. Which of the two forces is greater? What does Newton's law say? Equal in size and opposite in direction. Equal. Equal. Now, Lucas is making a very valid point. Let's see what the answer he says. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. The fact that the firefly splatters only means that with its smaller mass, it is less able to withstand the larger acceleration resulting from the interaction. Besides, fireflies have guts, and bug guts have a tendency to be splattable. Windshields don't have guts. They don't splat. Do they break? Yeah. I really certain that a firefly is not going to smash a windshield. You're right, because it's very tiny, but the forces are the same. Allow me to demonstrate here. I'll draw a picture of the bus, and there's the firefly, and they're going together. But a firefly can't fly at the same rate Yeah. Okay, well, regardless, even, the fire, even if the firefly or mosquito, whatever it is, is hovering in the air, right? Doesn't matter, right? Because it's equal forces. Now, do windshields hit bugs with a lot of force? Okay, so we'll just say like a decent size F, pretty good size F, right? So that this is the bus, and this is the firefly. Okay, that's the amount of force, the same size. Now, on the firefly, how what's the mass of the firefly compared to the mass of the bus? Like, see how tiny that M is? You can't even see that it's an M. That's how tiny it is. Which means that you're going to have a pretty good size acceleration whereas the mass of the bus is like ginormous m which means for the f's to be equal the acceleration must be about that big in other words nothing the bus is already going at a constant speed well but the acceleration due to the firefly is negligible it's practically zero right not even measurable. It doesn't make any sense. The forces are the same. It's the accelerations that are different. The forces are the same. The accelerations are different. If I whack Lucas in the face with my hand, his face whacks my hand with how much force? Equal. Equal. I don't, that doesn't make, this doesn't make any sense. Equal. Time. Now, he and I are relatively the same size when you compare. What do you do a lot better? If you compare me and Lucas compared to bugs and buses, right? We are all the same size, right? Okay. So the acceleration on me, it's going to hurt when you know when your old man said to you, "This is going to hurt me as much as it hurts you." No one ever does that anymore, do they? No. <laughs> no. I remember getting spanked from my dad saying, "This is going to hurt you as much as it's going to hurt me," and I of course said, "You mean Newton's third law, Dad?" Okay. Yeah, whack! <laughs> but that's what it is, right? That's what it is. The forces are the same. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? How does the firefly exert the same amount of Are you trying to tell me that Newton's been wrong all these years? Yeah. Really? Yeah. As much as I like you, Lucas, I don't been, know. The bus is dead, the firefly is dead. That's what What's different? Not the force, the. Accelerations are different. Now, the accelerations are different. The bus is going to win. The firefly is dead. Okay, let me put it this way. Same amount of force. Same amount of force. Let me put it this way. If I if I have 
a small little tennis ball, like 100 grams maybe, right? And I apply, I don't know, 50 newtons of force. It'll go quite a ways. Okay? 50 newtons of force. But if I apply 50 newtons of force to a bus, <coughs> how far does it go? Not it. Not it. Doesn't go anywhere. How come? Tiny mass, giant mass, same force. Just looking at it differently. Sorry, man, you're just going to have to believe me. I don't believe you. <laughs> Let's try another one. Let's see if I put the right answer in this time. Correct answer is. Why would you put nonsense in the question? The question is right. Like, I'm just throwing it away. Really? Yeah. For years, space travel was believed to be impossible because there was nothing that rockets could push off of in space in order to provide the propulsion necessary to accelerate. Oh, yeah. They actually believed, right? Like, imagine me on rollerblades, right? I push on the table, right? The table pushes back on me. What do I do? You go back. I go back. The, when you go swimming, you push on the water, the water pushes on you, you go forwards. When you drive your car, the tires push on the road, the road pushes on you, you go forwards. There's nothing in space, so there's nothing to push off of. Baloney. Nonsense, if you will. Rubbish. Okay? Space is void of air, so the rockets have nothing to push off. Wrong. Is there gra gravity is absent in space? That's really wrong. Is there gravity in space? Yeah, what do you think's holding the moon in place? What do you think's holding us around the sun? Gravity. The sun? We are falling, actually. We're just also moving forward at the same time. We're going to talk about gravity later. Don't worry. I'm not going to get into that today. I know what you're really watching. Space is void of air, so there's no air resistance space? No. Rockets do accelerate in space. Here's how it works. Common misconception, the average person on the street doesn't understand this. You guys are lucky. You have need to explain to The fact is that rockets do accelerate. There is indeed nothing for rockets to push off of in space, at least nothing which is external to the rocket. That's no problem. Rockets are able to accelerate due to the fact that they burn fuel and push the exhaust gases in the direction opposite. So they actually are pushing out exhaust gases. That's what you see in a rocket. And the gases do what? Provide, some of the push. Provide the push. They are pushing back on the rocket, so the rocket accelerates. There is very little resistance. This is, this is some rocket science. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well played, Lucas. Now, you, Lucas had a great question. Okay? Unfortunately, he's, he's misguided. Can you ask that question again? You asked before about the power rocket go far. Because you want you want it to keep going, right? Yeah. But you forgot. He, so what he's saying is you guys. If there's no friction in space, how are you gonna slow down? Then you just stop. <laughs> we'll get to that. He's saying that the rocket's gotta go super crazy fast at the start to get all the way to Mars because it's going to slow down. You've forgotten about Newton's first law that says rockets on their way to Mars already in motion stay in motion. What's you don't goal? need a force to keep it going. It's going to slow down. Well, how do they get slowed down when they get there? Yeah, well, they yeah. turn. No. Well, gravity is going to accelerate. Yeah, they they turn right. the rockets around and they push. Like if you're going forward, right? If you push the rocket out that way, right? Then you're going to slow down. Mr. Ben, how are you supposed to know that if you never did? Well, I know that. I've never been in space. Well, that's why I'm here to assist you. I'm busy that day. And yeah, correct answer is B. Many people are familiar with the fact that a rifle recoils when fired. This recoil is a result of action reaction force pairs. A gunpowder explosion creates hot gases that expand outward, allowing the rifle to push forward on the bullet. Consistent with Newton's third law of motion, the bullet pushes backwards upon the rifle. The acceleration of the recoiling rifle is less than exactly the same concept as this one right here. Which one is bigger, the rifle or the bullet? 
The rifle. I didn't ask you. Many of you said the same. What is the same? Force. If you have to write something in there, write forces are the same. Accelerations are different. And the accelerations are actually dependent on what? Mass. Dependent upon the mass. What if the masses were the same? The accelerations would be the same. What's that? No, that's what I'm saying, right? In this case here. The acceleration on the rifle is much, much, much smaller. And a rifle made out of aluminum or something. Yeah. No. The force on the rifle equals the force of the bullet, yet acceleration depends on both force and mass. Bullet has a greater acceleration due to the fact that it has a smaller mass. Remember, acceleration and mass are inversely proportional. Okay. Oh, we got one more. Yay. Yay, we finally get it. I didn't get it. That's like saying if I want to go work out, I'm going to use like five pound weights and I'm just going to keep bench pressing five pound weights because it's easy. That's what I'm saying. Clear your shoulders out and then you'll. If you don't challenge your brain with this, you're not going to get anywhere. Get through your butt. In the top picture. Kent Budget is pulling upon a rope that is attached to a wall. In the bottom picture, Kent is pulling upon a rope that is attached to an elephant. In each case, the scale, force scale reads 500 newtons. Kent is pulling with more force when the rope is attached to the wall. More force when the rope is attached to the elephant. The same. The scale says 500. How could it not be the same? I, I was going to answer that. I thought it was a trick question. <laughs> Kent is pulling with 500 newtons of force in each case. The rope transmits the force from Kent to the wall or to the element and elephant and vice versa. Since the force of Kent pulling on the wall and the wall pulling on Kent are action reaction force pairs, they must have equal magnitudes. Inanimate objects such as walls can push and pull. If I go running full speed into the wall, the wall, push back. The wall pushes on me and I bounce back and get a concussion. Should we try it? A wall yes. cannot yes. pull you. You gotta stand inside a wall. A wall is not gonna do anything. It's a wall. It's a wall. If I run into the wall, I don't bounce back. Well, uh, I say it can't. Doesn't make any sense. Did I not just bounce back? Yeah. I apply a force to the wall. The wall is fine. I'm gonna push on you too, buddy. And I'm bigger. <laughs> the wall is way bigger than me, so my acceleration is greater than the wall. Did the wall accelerate? No. No. Well, come. This is a wall. Look at the wall size of it. Nowhere. It's attached to the building. The building is like a thousand times bigger than me. The accelerations are different. 